This video is the third and final in this series on polymerization of CSTR where we're looking at calculating molecular weight distributions and degree of polymerization where we're given some rate constants and we're looking at a simplified type of polymerization in the CSTR and this is where there's initiation and propagation but no termination steps and so we show the mass balances in the previous videos and how to calculate the polymer concentrations and then we showed how to calculate the monomer concentration in the reactor and at the exit and we had 95 percent conversion and so now we're going to finish up by calculating the concentrations of each of the polymers and the molecular weight distributions and we're going to use a spreadsheet for that but we'll go through some of the calculations by hand make it clear where things come from. So if we look at the concentration of polymer 1, namely this radical that has one monomer unit, um, what we showed previously, this is related to the initiation rate constant, the monomer concentration in the reactor, the resonance time, this is 1 over tau, 1 over the space time and the resonance time, the propagation rate constant, and again the monomer concentration. And, and so if we substitute in the concentrations, the space time, and then the propagation rate constant, we obtain concentration of polymer 1, polymer with one monomer unit. So the concentration of polymer 2 from what we showed earlier is related to the propagation rate constant and the same terms times the concentration of polymer 1. And so what this means is if we substitute the rate constant, the monomer concentration reactor, again 1 over the space time, and again the rate constant, we get polymer 2 is related to polymer 1 as shown by the equation. And so we have the concentration now, and this is moles per liter, and polymer 3 is of course, the same equation times polymer 2, so forth. So very easy to generalize this into a spreadsheet. So some of the other terms we want to calculate, the sum of all the polymers we showed, again, in the previous video was this. And this is normally defined as the zero moment. And then another term that's going to be useful, where this is, this is the polymer concentration, this is J, the number of monomers in the polymer. So this summation is the total number of monomers in polymers, which would equal the concentration at the inlet of monomer and then the concentration at the outlet of monomer. And this is normally defined as the first moment. And so not surprisingly, if J squared, this is defined as the second moment. And as you can visualize in a spreadsheet, it's very easy to calculate these moments. And so now we can calculate the average molecular weight, and there's two types. The number average molecular weight, so the molecular weight of the monomer times just a weighted average, normalized. And notice this is molecular weight of the monomer times gamma 1 over gamma 0. The other way, the other notation that's used, molecular weight of the monomer times the degree of polymerization, the number version. We also have then molecular weight average, but a weight average. And this is very different, of course, because larger polymers contribute much more to this average. So calculate it very similarly. Here's molecular weight of the monomer. Now it's this summation like so which is gamma 2 over gamma 1, the second moment, over the first moment. And this is also, to introduce the other notation, this degree, the weight degree of polymerization. And the final term we want to calculate is the polydispersity, which is indication of the spread in the distribution. How broad is it? It's just this ratio, which happens to be in terms of the moments. And so we'll use a spreadsheet now, to do the calculations for this particular example, where we have the molecular weight of 45, and we have the numbers that we used already in the calculations, so we'll just generate these with the spreadsheet. 
So here's the spreadsheet that shows we put in the constants, the inlet concentration of monomer, the space time, molecular weight of the monomer, and then this particular cell now has done the calculation to get the exit concentration of the monomer, which we calculated already by hand, 0.052. And then the spreadsheet, where we have a column for J, PJ is calculated by the formulas we just showed you, and now each subsequent value of P uses the previous polymer. So to get polymer 4, we use the polymer 3 value times the numbers that we again showed by hand in the spreadsheet. We also create a column for J, P, J, J squared, P, J. Allows us to get these degrees of polymerization, the weight average molecular weight, and the number average molecular weight. And of course the weight average is much larger. It's a case, of course, where we have a small amount of polymerization. We don't have long enough resonance time to get very high molecular weights. And so we have the plot of PJ. It should be J instead of I here. And then J times PJ to show the difference in the distributions. And then, of course, with the spreadsheet, if we change the resonance time, we will see this spread out. So if this resonance time was increased, so if we change the rest of time, or we change, for example, the rate constant. So I made the rate constant for propagation 10 times larger, and you can see we spread out the distribution rather significantly. We've changed the number of average molecular weights also. This particular distribution may not be representative of these type of polymer reactions in general, where termination step would make these distributions much more symmetrical. But the purpose of this example is to show how to do the type calculations for polymers and how very easily with a spreadsheet you can calculate these distributions using the formulas from the mass balances.